Hello everyone, as I promised to you that I was gonna make this video, I am finally here. I got an information that I wanted to share with you. It took me a little bit longer because I wanted to have details. This information will definitely affect anybody who's looking to buy, who's looking to sell or invest. All those three are specifically different markets, so they will affect you differently if you're wanting to do any of those three. If you have never seen my videos, know my name is Margarita Cruz. I'm a licensed realtor in Dallas and Fort Worth, working more specifically Arlington and Grand Perry. If you saw my last video, I told you that I got a shirt other than my business cards, which I got last week, and they're very cool. And I also got this t-shirt. It's a TD Realty t-shirt, which is my broker's office. Um, and I'm very excited, by the way, just so you know, it's a, it's a small so you know okay so the next step is for me to show you some slides just so you know this information was provided by the national association of realtors and also metrotex which is the local association of realtors i did get their permission and authorization so there should be no problems with any type of copyrights so if you have any questions again as always you can reach out to me but let me go ahead and get started Okay guys, so the first screen that I want to show you is this one specifically because it's very much overall situation. Um, if you look in the left hand side of the screen, it's going to have 1Q20, that is the first quarter of 2020. And then the bottom of that, the second quarter of 2020, this is not as strong. However, it did actually was very strong. I mean, just based on our market, I mean, there was very low inventory. If you look at the top of that, prices went up. So which means that the pre medium price, like the average price what somebody would pay for a property was a little bit less than 285,000. Now it's up 2% to 285,500. And if you look at the active listings, though that went down almost 25%, which means that there's way less properties out there listed, which means there's a lot more competition and therefore we see multiple offer situation and people overpaying um having to overpay for the properties and and they outbid other a lot of other people we can we have seen after like 20 25 offers for one single house so you can see that if you decide to sell this is your market you're not gonna have a better market than it is right now because there's very low activity as far as people listing but there's still a very strong pool of buyers and why you know the interest rate is low i mean i have heard up to like a 2.5 2.65 percent interest rate and therefore you have more house to buy like there's more ability to buy because you can buy a more expensive house and i'm going to show you a screen on that too but you can buy more house basically with a lower interest rate. So that's what increasing a lot of the increasing a lot of the number of buyers versus the number of sellers. And, you know, which makes sense. A lot of sellers they just don't want to put their houses in the market because the virus is supposed to be very contagious. So um, to fight that, just so you know, what I do with my listing, um, I did provide booties like little boots that you can just cover your shoes with and hand sanitizer. And we do require for the uh, visitors to do wear a mask. So that is some way of protecting the current um, resident of the property and also protecting the future buyer so where is going to be the resident so it's just so a lot of people are not walking in and out there's some sort of protection we try to do our best so just in case you're considering listing you're not as scared yes we're going to do you're going to take some level of protection and liberal precaution to prevent the virus to end up in your house this is just an example of what we put out there in the front of the house. As soon as you walk in, you will be welcomed by this sign, as well as the hand sanitizer and the boots that I was telling you about, the shoe covers. This is another sign that we also provide with the shoe covers. We do provide the shoe covers for the visitors. And for the most part, they are very responsive and very respectful of the current residents and considering that they may end up being the future owner of that home so in a way they feel like we're protecting their property and or their future property so they're very responsive and very respectful so we do not find anybody complaining about having to put those shoes on 
Okay, buyers, so this is an example of what I was talking about earlier. I mentioned that with a lower interest rate, you actually have a higher buying power. And this is exactly what I was talking about. I just went to mortgagecalculator.com and I was able to pull this easy to use calculator. So you can also pull it on your phone as well. So let's say again, as I mentioned in DFW, the average purchase price for the property is 285,000. And let's say that you have a 20% down. You don't have to do a 20% down. You can go as low as a 3.5%. However, if you do pay a 20% down, you will be saving some type of insurance that the lender will charge you just to protect them in case they have to foreclose on you. This does not necessarily benefit you on a monthly basis. It benefits the lender, but you still have to pay it if you have to, if you're not able to pay a 20% down up front. So going back to the interest rates, in this case, let's say that it, you're getting a 3.5% uh, uh, interest rate. And assuming that your property taxes a year is going to be $4,500 and your insurance for the house is $1,400 a year. Now, the lender is going to do the payment with a combination of taxes and insurance, principal and interest. And in this example, it specifically is $1,516. Now, let me give you a different example where the only difference is going to be just the interest rate. So here it is. If you notice the only difference that I have on this slide is a 5% interest rate versus a 3.5% interest that I had on the other one. If you notice the bottom of the screen is gonna show $1,716. It's exactly a $200 monthly payment difference. And again, the only difference was a 1.5% interest rate. So for those who are waiting for the market to crash and possibly buying a cheaper home, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to save money if the interest rate are going to increase. At some point, they will increase. I mean, they're not going to stay as low as they are right now. The average percentage of interest rate that we noticed last year, it was about 0.5, 5.5. So they're not going to stay as low as they are right now. And again, I went with a 3.5% just because of what I've seen personally. But again, it's a, it, they can be as low as a 2.5, 2.65, 2.75. So yes, you can save a lot more money considering a lower interest rate. Now sellers, if you are considering selling the next 6 to 12, 24 months even, the right time to sell is now. This is your opportunity to shine. Keep in mind builders are paying close attention to the demand and the shortage of single family residential. So they are right now rushing to get all the single family residential permits to start building. So in the next 6 months, maybe eight months, this properties will be built. So this is going to be only part of your competition because there will be more competition. So let me tell you what it is. Now, buyers, sellers, and investors, this is information that will be interesting for everybody. This is the U.S. Weekly Unemployment Claims. And if you notice, there was so far 62,703,364 total unemployment claims. This is as of September 26 of 2020. Now, keep in mind that if people don't have jobs, they don't have money. If they don't have money, they may not have the opportunity to pay their mortgage. If they don't pay the mortgage, they may end up in foreclosure. And having foreclosures flooding the market is not going to be good for those sellers. Now, for the buyers and investors, yes, because there will be more opportunity to negotiate, not only to negotiate price, we also could negotiate um, concessions and closing costs and other costs, maybe even repairs if we needed to. So yes, that's perfect for the buyer and the investor, but the seller, mm, not, not the best. So they can easily switch from being a seller's market to a buyer's market. That's why I keep telling you, if you're considering selling the house, maybe right now, October 2020, will be the best time you're going to have in the next probably 24, 36 months. So just keep that in mind. Now let's talk about Texas. Now this is Texas specific. And as you can see, the unemployment rate is still pretty high at a 6.8%. And there is more than half a million jobs that is still not out there available to compare to 2019. So I just wanted to point this out because although, as you can see, the graph is still going down with the unemployment, which is great. I mean, it is really, really good. However, it does not mean that people actually recover their past months. It just means that people are actually getting jobs and the market is moving, the people are working. And so yes, it's getting better. However, it does not recover what they have already lost. So I just wanted to point that out 
because again, we're moving forward with additional information as far as the forbearance and what foreclosure will mean to us in 2021. Before I move on, um, just in case you're wondering what is forbearance, forbearance is what your mortgage servicer or lender allows you to temporarily pay your mortgage at a lower payment or pause paying your mortgage. You will have to pay that payment reduction or pause payments back later. Whatever you didn't pay, you're still responsible for paying at the end of forbearance. To my understanding, the government imposed this um, basically stop of foreclosures um, for 180 days. And then it was extended for another 180 days. At that point, um, the expectation is that this will end. And at that point, people are still responsible for coming up with the money in full unless they come up with a negotiation uh, with the lender up front before they complete their foreclosure. There's a picture that I found that is very, very interesting that I want to share with you and why I think what I think and why is my expectation on 2021 is what it is. So let me show you that. Now look at this information. This is something that I just went to online and just went to CELO.com. And if you see all those red little dots, those are possible foreclosures. Um, these are people that are paying late on their mortgage that they have uh, received a letter. This is just public information. They have received a letter for already from their lender to let them know that they are behind on payments. Um, more than likely they are aware, but they have at least received the letter, which again is public information. Now, CELO pulled these letters and then they report each other, one of those properties who are currently not on time with their payments. Now, this is my area. I work in Arlington and Grand Prairie specifically, as I mentioned earlier, but I wanted to show you this because this is very important, very basic, but important to see. Now, one thing that I wanted to know is that all those little dots that you just saw, it doesn't mean that those properties will go into foreclosure automatically. That's not necessarily the case. There's multiple options for the people who are in forbearance. One of the options would be if the lender, let's say, they normally do a 30-year loan on a mortgage, just so you know. But let's say the lender just says, you know what, let's just do a 31-year loan instead of a 30 year loan. So the year uh, they will add one year of payments at the end of the term of the loan and it's taken care of. So the owner doesn't have to worry about it anymore. They, yes, they didn't make the payments, but they're not in foreclosure. The lender will just basically like amend or change the mortgage and make it a 31 year loan. Another option is that they provide him with the second loan. This would be like a lien on the house or they, they just make a second loan, a balloon loan, um, and they just make separate payments. They still continue to pay your, their mortgage payment as usual um, as soon as they are able to, to start making the payments and they have a second loan, let's say like a credit card, just to put it as an example. So just they have a second payment on that loan until they pay off what they, what they owe. That's another option. Um, another thing that could happen is that let's say the person who owns the house and that is in basically late with their payments, they don't want to deal with any of that. They can actually sell their homes. As I mentioned to you, the market is pretty hot. Um, prices are going up on houses. So what they the other option would be is that they actually put their house in the market and instead of losing the house, increasing the term of the loan or making a separate loan for that debt that they already have on their late payments. They could just put it in the market and sell it, make some money out of that. Let's say that they owe the bank $100,000. Now the house is worth, let's say, $180,000. They make some money, they pay out, you know, everything that they owe, and, you know, they're out of the mortgage. That's another option. And this does not necessarily mean that they actually, the bank got to actually foreclose on the house. So there's still multiple ways that they can solve this. So it doesn't mean that necessarily the market will be flooded by foreclosures. But is there a risk? You bet it is. There is definitely a risk that that is a possibility that could happen. Now, here I am again trying to back up my information with the facts. So what you're looking at right now is the mortgage delinquency rates. If you look at this graph, uh, if you see the worst of it, it was in the second, well, it's coming in the second quarter of 2020. Um, if you look at the di three different colors, you can see the blue, the red, and the green. 
The blue is basically any mortgages that are laid between 30 and 59 days. The red is laid between 60 and 89 days. And the green, which is the worst, is part of the last graph. It, it shows um, any payments that are laid over 90 days. Um, this is what I think, what I think of the market crash of 2021, maybe moving into 2022. Some people are starting to say that it may even move forward into 2023, which is very scary. Um, unless the government does something about it, in my opinion, keep in mind, this is all my opinion. This is based on the facts that I've seen, education that I've gotten, people that I've talked to. But again, in my opinion, it's coming. Some people call it as a wave. Some people call it as a tsunami. Um, I just think that the market is going to turn. Um, so pay attention to that. All those uh, sellers, please pay attention to this information. Buyers, please pay attention to this information as well. If you're looking to invest, please, this is your time to start saving and uh, preparing. Keep in mind that although you think, oh, you know, it's just looking about, um, just thinking about the investors, just thinking about all those people that are going to take in, basically take properties away for pennies on the dollar. In a way, it's true. However, if you think about it, um, property owners are the ones that pay property taxes. If there's a lot of vacancies, if there's a lot of foreclosures without owners, nobody's paying property taxes. That means that those who actually do own a house will pay the consequences. So yes, I want all those properties to be owned. I want property owners to be paying taxes. So we spread the, the cost between everybody. We don't want a lot of vacancies. We don't want a lot of properties to be unoccupied. Yes, I want it occupied. So I'm looking at every single angle. Um, please don't take me, oh, she's greedy or anything like that. Um, I'm just looking at every single angle. This basically benefits everybody. This benefits the schools, the streets, the roads, police. I mean, it's property taxes that we're talking about also. Um, yes, can people take advantage of this? You're absolutely right. If you're looking to invest, yes, you can take advantage of the market just like people did back in 2007, 8, 9, 10, 11. Yes, you can take advantage of it. It can be pretty profitable. At the same time, is it bad for the economy? Yes, it is bad for the economy, but you know, we will recover. I hope the government or something happens with the lenders that the bank and the lenders learned their lesson back from 2008 and this doesn't happen again. But is it possible? Um, in my opinion, yes, it is. We could go through the same thing again. Now, let's go ahead and move forward to the next slide. Okay, y'all. Now, this is one of the last reports that we have seen on the market. Um, now, if you look at this, this is, was uh, a survey that was given by the Mortgage Banker Association as of the ending of October 9, 2020. Now, this is talking specifically about the refinance index. Um, there was a 0.3% from uh, lower from the previous week. However, pay attention to this huge number. You see that 44? That is a 44% higher than it was in the same week last year. Isn't that crazy? I mean, it's a huge percent increase compared to last year. The unadjusted purchase index decreased 1% compared with the previous week, and it still was 24% higher than it was the same week a year ago. Now, what do I want to say with this? Um, well, let me just go ahead and move forward and I'll come back to this. On the mortgage applications for the refinance and the home purchase, both decreased slightly um, from last week, despite the 30-year fixed mortgage rate declining and the new MBA, which is the uh, Mortgage Banker Association, surveyed that was low at 3%. So, okay, let me continue again. This it says refinance and the purchase activity continues to run well ahead of last year's pace, which is good. Okay, and it's fueled by the recorded uh, the record low rates and strong home buyer demand. So, um, housing supply is still a challenge for as for many aspiring buyers, and activity should continue to stay strong for the rest of the year. Now, it is telling it is telling us that you know it should continue strong for the rest of the year. However, if you look at the top, and not the the yellow above, but the one above, like almost in the middle, it says the purchase interest decreased one percent, and that is basically no more um, normal. If you have talked to me in the past, you know that I do consider the um, you know the fall, the the winter to to drop a little bit. The market drops a little bit because you know most of us are honestly just thinking about Halloween and Thanksgiving and New Year and Christmas and stuff like that. So we're not really considering about 
you know, buying and selling. So that's not a concern for us, for any of us. Well, some people do, but you know, for most of us, we just want to enjoy our families and enjoy the holidays. So a lot of people don't necessarily buy, uh, but they still consider that it will continue strong, maybe stronger than other years, but strong, strong. I don't know. It normally does drop a little bit. So um, keep an eye on that. If you're looking to sell again, this is the time. It, it is going to slow down a little bit if you're considering putting the market, um, your house in the market right now. But is it stronger than other years? Definitely yes. And is there a chance it will decrease for next year? Definitely yes. So I give you advice, um, not in a bad way, but it's just based on what I see and what I expect. This is fully my opinion based on facts that I've pulled from you know different sources. If you just look at the news, if you know that there is a virus, if you know that there's unemployment, if you know that the sales are going up and the interest rates are going down, do you know that there is a shortage of, um, of properties, if you know there is a huge demand for single family residential. Am I lying to you? No. I'm just giving you the facts. I'm telling you the truth. And again, it's my opinion based on the facts. So um, we're almost done with this video. I know it's been pretty long. And I did say last video that I was going to, I wanted to give you this information, but it was going to be long, but we're almost done. Uh, we only have a few minutes left. Now, in this report from the Federal Housing Finance Agency, I'm not going to spend too much time. Uh, this is only talking about foreclosure prevention and everything that they're doing to try to prevent the foreclosure um, wave, I guess, they're doing something about it. Remember I told you earlier that I was a little bit concerned unless the government did something about it? Yes, they are doing something about it. Uh, I'm still concerned because, again, this is information that I already show you, but I'm going to put you the same slide. There was two slides back, but I'm going to show it to you anyway. So this is the slide that I wanted to show you. This is two slides back, but I wanted to bring it back because I can see the importance of this one. So yes, they are doing something about it. Yes, they have a uh, foreclosure prevention plan. Um, but again, the worst of it was in the second quarter. They are talking about the resolution of the first quarter, but this is the second quarter and I don't know what happened. We will find out what happens on the third quarter to see if they had a resolution for the second one. Um, we will know that in the future. Um, we will know more once they have a new report and a new survey. Um, especially, I don't expect any major changes, to be honest. If anything's going to happen, it's going to start to happen in mid-March. But that's, again, my personal opinion. Just keep that in mind as my personal opinion um, based on what I see. But um, just wanted to bring that back just for right now. All right, we're almost done. So in this slide, um, it's basically just information that you already know based on what I said, and everybody knows this, that there's limited inventory. Like the, we already kind of already know, everybody knows that there's like properties with 15, 7, 15, 25 multiple offers all at once. So yeah, we already know that there's a limited inventory for all those people looking to sell Please know this is the time. This is the opportunity to sell at a good price. It may change. So um, affordability. Uh, builders are starting to build. The new constructions is still limited. But once they start to build, they are going to focus on um, the prices that people would normally buy. They're not building like the huge homes over 3,000, 4,000, 5,000 square feet. They are going to focus on where the demand is. And that's normally between the 250 to 350,000. So I think that's the where they're going to focus. Um, the mortgage. Uh, the mortgage, it all depends who you talk to. <laughs> Um, yes, it is possible that it is getting a little bit easier to buy, but at the same time, uh, they also want to be cautious. They want to be careful. They don't want to lend as much. They don't want to do the hundred percent financing. Um, they're increasing their requirements on the, um, credit score. So that is actually changing at the same time. The interest rates are historically low. So as low as it is, um, if you remember the previous slide as well, the more, the lower the interest rate, the more house that you can buy. Next year is going to be a little bit harder because keep in mind that the properties that you are going to look at, more than likely, they're not going to be flips. Um, more than likely, they're not going to be properties that are already fixed up and moving ready. It's properties that you're probably going to need some, some work um, done. They're going to require some additional work to be done to them. So not only you need the money to buy the house, you also need the money to um, 
reinvest in the property, get maybe new floor, new paint, and you can easily spend $10,000 very quickly in a property. Anything else than that will be a major renovation, but $10,000 is the average that you can spend to make a house look pretty. Now, concerns about the general economy. Uh, yes, there is a fear. I think that people are going to start to feel feel like if they could possibly lose their jobs, um, if they don't have a lot of stability, or if they work in a certain department or in a certain field of employment, and they're just going to be cautious. They're probably going to just save their money and wait until the recession is over, which, again, that's going to drop the number of demand on single-family residential. So if you have a property for sale, if you're going to look into sale six, 12 months, um, there are going to be less buyers out there in that pool. So just keep that in mind. In conclusion, we are finally at the end of this video, and I'm going to ask you to think about these questions. One of them is forbearance and foreclosures. What are they going to happen? When are they going to start happening? Are they actually going to happen? Is forbearance going to you know, slow down the market? Are they going to continue? Are they going to you know, just let it go and a lot of people go into foreclosures, we don't know. Also, the evictions, remember that a lot of people are not paying the rent. What are landlords going to do? Are landlords are going to continue to hold that property and keep it as a rental? Or are they going to be completely grossed out and say, you know what, the tenant's not paying me rent. I don't want to deal with this anymore. And are they going to flood the market with properties that they no longer want? Keep in mind, remember I was telling you that there was going to be a, you know, a large number of properties out there, but they may need some repairs. Many times uh, when properties are rentals, they're not very well taken care of by the by the tenants. So they're going to be properties that if they put them on the market and if they're just want to get rid of it, more than likely, they're not going to want to fix it. They're just going to get rid of it and they don't want just don't want to have that mortgage under their name. So we may see that as well. Uh, construction, you, as I mentioned before, yes, um, builders are building and they're going to build everything to the desires of the clients. Anybody who's looking to buy any, anywhere below $350,000, that is what they are going to build. Uh, now, new construction is going to be the recovery. More than likely, if they, we continue to have a shortage of properties, they are going to build enough because they were gonna, they're going to want to supply the demand that there is for single-family residential. Now, the commercial real estate investment, more than likely, that's going to be on hold. Um, I don't see a lot of investors wanting to uh, invest their money in properties that are not moving, that are not generating any profits. So more than likely, they're just going to stay on hold um, until we know what's going to happen, until maybe there is a, a vaccine or for the coronavirus, until you know businesses go back and start using their offices. Because right now, there's a lot of offices that just send their people home, and a lot of them are just working from home. And they may or may not go back to having uh, groups, large groups of people or employees working in a single building. We don't know what's going to happen. Now, um, the values impacting uh, the prices and uh, how maintained and, or increase. Are they going to stay the same? Are they going to go up? Are they going to go down? We definitely don't know. Um, if anybody told you that they know exactly what's going to happen next year, it's, it's completely a lie. We, we don't know. Um, that's why I'm asking you to make yourself these questions. And at the end, keep in mind, if you decide to buy, you decide to rent, you decide to invest, you decide to sell, all of that is affecting your bottom line. It's affecting your pocket. Um, I can just give you facts. I can just give you what I hear in the news, the conversations that I have with other people. But at the end, this is only my opinion and my opinion only. Am I waiting for the market to crash? Yes, I am. Am I going to do something about it in the future? Definitely, I am. But what are you going to do? What are you going to do with your money, your investment, your future? Um, so that's all up to you. I just wanted to give you this information. At the end, you make your, you know, you may come up with your own conclusion. And again, as always, if you have any questions, reach out to me. If I don't know the answer to something, trust me, I'm going to find the answer for you and for me. I'll talk to you soon, guys. I appreciate you waiting until the end of this video. And if I help, can help anybody that you know, please reach out to me. Take care.